Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today I would like to start a new segment, part of the student journal series that I'm doing. Uh, in particular, with these episodes, I'd like to talk about a colleague, a student, a friend, an imam, um, somebody that I've met along the way, and particularly somebody who is also currently giving da'wah so that I could advertise their da'wah efforts and also give you a little glimpse at uh, what they're like, what their personality is like based on my experience and also document, you know, some of the stories, some of my experiences as a student. The first person I'd like to talk about is Sheikh Mufti Muhammad Ibn Munir. So I'll get straight to the point. Basically, right after I arrived in Medina, this was back in 2010, I think maybe the first week or two after I had arrived, there was a brother who he scheduled a gathering at his house. I just happened to be in the right place at the right time, and I found myself at this gathering. There's a brother named Abdurrahman, also known as Granite, Allah bless him. He scheduled a gathering with one of the shuyukh one of the scholars of Medina, Sheikh Ali Nasser Faqih. And he invited some of the new Western students to come to sit with the Sheikh, to benefit, to get some advice as new students. What should we do in Medina? How should we benefit? What should our outlook be? And then we could ask the Sheikh any advice, any questions. And it was a very small gathering. It was a very intimate setting. Jazakallah khair to the brother. So I remember when I arrived, I'd been Muslim about two years. I'm here in Medina, I didn't really know any Arabic, I didn't really know too many of the brothers, or I didn't really know who any of the shayukh were. And uh, I remember I arrived, and basically, there was the brother Abdul Rahman sitting down, and there was brothers all around the room sitting down, and uh, there was the Sheikh, and then there was Mufti. And I didn't know who Mufti was, uh, but my first impression was, when I saw him, Basically, I didn't really notice him at first, but what happened was once the uh, the session started and the sheikh began talking, then when the sheikh was finished talking, uh, Mufti, he would start translating. So, of course, I had to notice him at that point. So, and my first thoughts, to be perfectly honest, uh, this was, back, like I said, back in 2010, this was some years ago, but my first thoughts was, MashaAllah, this brother looked so young like I thought he was maybe honestly in his in his mid-teens he looked very young to me now it turns out he's actually uh, a little bit older than me Allah bless him preserve him but uh, those were my thoughts and he really stood out in that regard because he conducted himself with such good manners and such dignity and he was so skilled at translating and you could tell that his Arabic was very strong that he was a very studious individual just the way that he he carried himself and the way that he translated and the way that he spoke to the people and the way that he was able to to hear what the sheikh was saying take some notes and then without batting an eye just spit it all back and really keep your attention and really uh, get the message to you without forgetting and stumbling and forgetting the ayat and the hadith that were mentioned and so on and so forth so I was very impressed not only that he was so he was so good at it, but that he looked so young. And the reason I'm, I'm mentioning this is because I'm just being honest, number one, but number two, it's something I want to bring attention to because I'm sure this is something that Mufti has been dealing with for a long time. Because, I mean, let's be honest, when I first saw him, and like I said, I was a new Muslim, I didn't even, I didn't even know Arabic, and here I see this guy MashaAllah, Allah bless him. He looks, I feel like he's way younger than me, but in terms of his knowledge and his skills and the way that he carried himself, he seemed like he was way beyond me. It can make you feel a certain type of way. Now, I think there's basically two ways that you can go about it. Number one is the wrong way. You can hate on the brother. Some people... Even though Mufti, he's a, he's a Muslim, he's your Muslim brother, and he's giving da'wah, and he's trying to teach brothers and, and really use the skills that Allah blessed him with and benefit people, 
you can be appreciative of that and say, MashaAllah, Allah bless him and, and benefit and understand that he is like, you know, when you have Michael Jordan on your team, you shouldn't hate on Michael Jordan. You should appreciate that and he might lead you to some championships. So that's one way of looking at it. But unfortunately, there are people who look at it and they feel like because the brother is young, he, he's younger than you, or, or looks young rather, but it starts, you start realizing, oh, like, man, he's, he's younger than me and he's just way beyond me in terms of knowledge and, and these certain skills and then you, you, you could take it personally and feel like it makes you look bad and really has nothing to do with you. But this is what unfortunately happens, you know, I'm just being honest. Brothers hate on Mufti, but I mean, I'm sure a lot of the great scholars throughout time had people hating on them. If you, uh, if you learn about some of the shiukh of the past that today are well respected amongst everyone, you, uh, you'll, you'll often find that when they were young, they reached very high levels of knowledge in comparison to a lot of their peers, a lot of the other students of knowledge. So there's no reason to, to hate on somebody for that. You should appreciate that, respect that, and, and you, know, you, know, you thank Allah that you're even in the presence of somebody who, who can, uh, inshallah, benefit you in the ummah. So anyways, moving on, that was my first uh, impression. I was like, mashallah, who is this young guy that's just like... I didn't even know Arabic at that time. And this brother, I was like, man. So anyways, so it was a very nice gathering. And afterwards, um, we, we ate. You know, traditionally, you'll eat, uh, they'll have these big plates of chicken and rice. And the brothers, they'll sit together and they'll eat. And the sheikh sat, sat with us and all the brothers, we sat together. We sat, we ate. And I remember I was sitting uh, across from, from Mufti. We were introduced to each other and we said salams to each other and I asked him what his name was and um, where he was from and this and that. He told me he, he, his name was Muhammad. And that's another thing that I want to mention. Because, you know, there's the website Mufti Q&A and haters are on there. People saying stuff like, oh, who, who is he to call himself Mufti and who does he think he is and this and that. When I met him, he told me his name was Muhammad. And then when I went back and I and I talked to other brothers, you know, like, oh, you know Muhammad and from, from Philadelphia, this and that. They're like, oh, you mean Mufti? I'm like, oh, he told me his name was Muhammad. He's like, yeah, that's his name, but, but everyone calls him Mufti. Like, he's, he's, he's Ma'roof, he's known as, as Mufti. That's what the brothers call him. So, I mean, I don't know the whole history behind specifically how he got the name Mufti, but I know that when I met him, he introduced himself as Muhammad. I don't think he ever came at me saying my name's Mufti or anything like that. <laughs> it's something that brothers, uh, I think, uh, well, from my experience, it's something that brothers called him. Just something that's that, like a nickname that seemed to stick. And um, I think that can be beneficial in certain cases to, to do that sort of thing because I'm sure the brother has faced, I know he's faced a lot of haters, man. A lot of people hating on him. So sometimes it's necessary, I guess, to, to uh, support a brother. Maybe call, maybe call him a name like that to encourage him to keep seeking knowledge, to keep reaching his potential, and not let the haters get to you and things like that. So that's another thing I wanted to mention. So I think the next time I met with him, he was at a brother, a good friend who came the same year as me, a brother named uh, Morad. He was in his room, and uh, somehow I, I ended up uh, getting in there and the brothers were eating and I was sitting and um, I was getting to know Mufti a little bit asking him some questions and there was some fitna going on at this time um, that I, I'm not going to get into but I remember sort of uh, I think all the brothers were sort of feeling each other out to see where they stood in regards to certain issues certain situations <laughs> so so anyway so I remember you know asking Mufti about a few things and uh, asking him some questions and and uh, mashallah tabarakallah like for example, I asked him about a certain hadith, and he was able to, just right when I sort of mentioned it, bits and pieces of it in English, he was able to tell me who narrated it, he had memorized the hadith, he quoted it for me, he told me about it, and um, just off the top of his head. And also, at that time, like I said, brothers were sort of feeling each other out, because uh, people were going to extremes at that time. And I was actually surprised because I sort of, I guess, threw a couple things out there to see how he would react, and I was very impressed at how just he was, how balanced he was, how he didn't go to extremes that I saw other brothers go to. 
he seemed very wise in his response to, to the questions and stuff like that. So this was my impression of Mufti when I first met him. And I remember I also asked him for some advice. And this was something that I, I was asking everybody who uh, had been there before me for advice and this and that. And some, some brothers had a, a lot of stuff to say. Some brothers didn't. But, you know, Mufti, mashallah, I remember I asked him. And the brother pulled out a piece of paper. He got a pen. And he wrote me this whole page, this, this whole page front and back of names of Mutun which are little, they're like little booklets that uh, you can buy for like a real or a couple reals and they're meant for students to, to memorize. And he wrote me this whole list of uh, Mutun front and back that he was like breaking it all down telling me look if you, if you, this was all just from his memory just spur of the moment. He was like yeah you know if you memorize this it's, it's about this and that and that subject and the other and if you do this and that and the other you know you'll be a, a real good strong student. And I'm like, I don't even know Arabic. I can't even honestly read what he's writing down at this time. I'm, I'm like, I've been Muslim two years. I'm about to go into level one of the Arabic Institute, you know. And he gave me, like, just from the top of his head, all these different matun to memorize. <laughs> Mashallah. I got to find that paper. I, I still got it. I'm sure I remember one summer. I guess when I went back that summer, I tried, like, uh, looking up some of those online because I couldn't even read it. So I was trying to type them into Google and translate it and figure out, like, what, <laughs> what it all was. I think it's at my parents' house, inshallah. I got to find that. If I find it, inshallah, I'll, I'll try to post it. But that was my, um, my experience meeting Mufti. And um, I'm not really the most social guy, I guess. Like, I don't really go out and hang out with brothers and hit them up and this and that. So I, I never... Back then, I never called Mufti or you know tried to hang out with him or anything like that because I don't I don't want to waste brother's time or whatever. Um, I don't like really hitting brothers up unless I have a reason to. So um, we would cross cross paths every once in a while and say salams, and he was always real cool. And I would also see him when uh, there was similar gatherings to the one that I had previously mentioned. Like there was another gathering with uh, with a lot of scholars. They actually entered a, rented a, an istiraha. It's a place where there are these like really nice, fancy places with like a pool and and uh, different rooms, like a real nice house basically that you can rent, and you can have parties there, gatherings and and whatnot. So I remember brothers they rented one of these, and then they invited a lot of the different uh, ulama, different shiuch over. And again, Mufti, he was um, one of the brothers there translating. And uh, and then once he graduated and things of that nature, and then. After after that, I started making these videos on YouTube. I started trying to give da'wah. I interviewed a couple of brothers, and then I felt comfortable reaching back out to Mufti and seeing if he would be willing to, to do an interview. So I reached out to him, and he was, um, alhamdulillah, Allah made it easy. Allah made it very easy. We were just both in the same place at the same time, and we recorded that interview um, in Baltimore. He was just in town for... Uh, to give some lessons and things like that and I was I just happened to be in town for the summer break and uh, I'm not from Baltimore City but I'm from outside Baltimore so alhamdulillah it was very easy for us to meet up <laughs> and subhanAllah if you watch the video it's really interesting because we were walking around this was by uh, the hotel he was staying at and uh, we were walking around trying to figure out you know where are we gonna sit checking out the different the different places and uh, if you see where we initially sat it's, alhamdulillah, it's a nice setting. It's a, you know, there's a little umbrella. We're at a table. And alhamdulillah, we ended up sitting there because it actually started to rain while we were doing the interview. So we just happened to be under that umbrella. Like, alhamdulillah, it was, um, it was a really good day. It was a really good interview. I really appreciate him doing that. And um, if you haven't seen that, I encourage you to check that out. And, uh, and since then, we also launched Mufti Q&A. I, I just sort of realized the potential that he had because he has a Hadith disciple, which is a YouTube channel and it's sort of his movement, his da'wah. And it's just sort of like, um, mashallah, tabarakallah, like brothers just uploading his live streams and just everything he's doing because he's so active. Allah bless him, Allah preserve him. And um, they're just putting everything up. And, and I was going through some of the videos and I saw that he had these Q&A sessions and I was like, I was like, mashallah tabarak Allah, listen man, if you really want to know if somebody has knowledge, then check out their Q&As. Like if you do a Q&A with me, 
you'll know right away this brother Saja doesn't know anything like I have if I'm gonna talk about something I need to prepare for it I need to practice it I need to memorize certain things probably have papers out in front of me all of that <laughs> okay and inshallah I can do that okay perhaps but after that if you want to start asking me anything else I don't know I don't know I don't know but this brother <laughs> Sheikh Mufti mashallah like he just asked question after question after question from all types of different subjects and he's uh he's able to answer them he's able to bring forth the different opinions of the scholars he's able to like uh, subhanallah i've never seen anything like him mashallah allah bless him and, and protect him and preserve him and cause us to benefit from him like i'm not just saying this just to praise mufti and just be like oh mufti he's so good and he's this and that but it's like we should we should appreciate that allah blessed him in these ways and we should benefit and we should recognize you know I've never seen anyone like this brother and it's, it's really a shame that we don't treat him perhaps better than we do and sort of facilitate him reaching his his potential so that we all benefit this is this is about us benefiting from him you know he can sit at home all day with all his knowledge and just live his life but he's actually very active and if you if you go to his uh, website hadithdisciple.com if you check out his YouTube channel you'll see how active he is Mashallah. So, you know, I think it's very important to um to for us to recognize that. That's why I'm making this episode so that we can all benefit, myself included. Like, uh, take advantage of it. If the brother's in your town, go sit with the brother. If if you have any questions, go to Mufti Q and A. See if he answered your question. If not, send him a question. Like, we we need we need to increase ourselves in knowledge, and when we have a brother like that around, it's important that. That we utilize him and his skills and we and we improve as an ummah as we, that we improve as a muslim community so that's basically all i wanted to say allah bless uh, mufti allah preserve him and cause us to benefit from him appreciate him may allah protect him from the haters may allah protect us from hating on on brothers <laughs> brothers that are on our team other muslims because we're jealous or we're this or we're that. And, um, you know, that's all that I, I really wanted to say. Jazakum Allahu uh, Khairan for listening. And uh, check all the links in the description. And check out the brother's different, the different, his different websites. The different uh, da'wah that he's given. Jazakum Allahu Khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.